Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. Just wanted to cover this question. This was asked to me recently, so let's get right into it. Um, I have a random variable x and represents the amount of damage to um, automobiles. And um, yeah, we're told that we have an insurance company that covers damage to automobiles. There is a deductible, however. Uh, the deductible is b over 10. A b is, of course, unknown, but I assume it's a positive real number. And we're told that uh, the amount of damage to auto, this random variable, is distributed uniformly over the interval 0 to b, um, where we're including 0 as well as b. So it doesn't really matter because since this is a continuous random variable, I've mentioned this in several videos, including or not including the endpoints doesn't matter whatsoever. Regardless, this is our density function for the amount of damage to auto since um, we're told that it's uniform, so this is just the density function you should know. It's always um, 1 over the length of the interval. The length of the interval is b, so 1 over b. Um, and uh, we want to know something about the policy payout, so I've, I've called that a new random variable, of course, because the policy payout is not the same as the damage to auto. You should know that because there's a deductible of b over 10. Anyways, we want to find this business. We want to know what is the ratio of the standard deviation of the payout to the standard deviation of the damage. So already annoyed since I have to compute standard deviations, which is never fun. However, one of these is easy. One of these is easy. What's the easy one? Uh, the easy one is the standard deviation of just my random variable x. Uh, we know that this is the square root of the variance of x. And if you're studying for this exam, you should absolutely know what is the variance of a uniform random variable. It is equal to, um, so the square root of b minus a, and b is actually, well, it's the square root of, <clears throat> so let me say this, it's the difference of the, the endpoints of my interval, so b minus 0 squared over 12. This is the standard deviation of a uniform random variable. So this simplifies, I guess, to b divided by root 12. I'm just going to leave it like that. <clears throat> I'm not going to simplify anything else there for now, but I'll just sort of keep track of this guy, right? All right, so we'll come back to that. Let's write down this random variable. This is, in my opinion, probably the part that could give you difficulty. We need to find an expression, in this case going to be a piecewise defined representation for the policy payout. right? So it's not the same as the amount of damage, so hopefully that's clear to you. So what is what are the values of my policy payout? This is a very standard type of scenario. Okay, um, In my opinion it's a good idea to write down an explicit representation for this new random variable based on the information given. So this is, again, watch some of my other videos. This is very standard here. So what am I going to do? Well, just think about this logically here. What is the, the payout going to be if the loss, if the amount of damage is less than the deductible? Just think about how a deductible works. Okay, so this must be equal to 0 if the loss, let's just say this, if the loss is less than or equal to the deductible. And then it's equal to um, the loss minus the deductible if uh, the, <clears throat> the loss is greater than the deductible, but we know that the loss is less than b. So I can say this. So this is, I think, the crucial piece of information that you want. And uh, hopefully this makes sense as to why it is. Think about it in terms of the insurance company. We're going to pay nothing if your loss is less than the deductible, of course. That's just how a deductible works. Then we're going to pay the excess of the deductible. So if your loss exceeds the deductible, we'll pay whatever's excess. Because you pay the deductible, we pay the excess, right? When I say we, I mean I'm thinking of me as the insurance company. So that's the situation there. And now... Um, I want to compute the variant, or actually the standard deviation. This is what we're after, right? So quite annoying. Damn it, quite annoying. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. That's annoying. So 
First of all, I'll start with the expectation. I'm not gonna go through this entire computation because it's just calc one. I mean, I'll do the, the meat of it, but then the annoying computation I'll leave up to you. So the expectation of uh, the, the, uh, uh, the policy payout is equal to, by definition, well, I'll first integrate over zero, but the integral of zero is zero. So just this guy's gone. Let's integrate uh, over this region. The expectation of uh, the policy payout is equal to the value of the policy payout, which is x minus b over 10, uh, times the density function, 1 over b, with respect to x. What are my interval, or sorry, what are my bounds of integration? b over 10 to b. So nothing really crazy going on. This is just standard type of type of integral, not, not too bad, really. Uh, so this is equal to... Um, just, just leave this alone, just factor the 1 over b out, and then increase the exponent to 2 and divide. So x minus b over 10 squared divided by 2, going from b over 10 to b. Notice when I plug in b over 10, it's going to zero out. So this is going to give me, just do the, the, the integration right here. Uh, I'm going to skip a couple steps because this is annoying, but just, just do some algebra. It's very easy algebra. Uh, this this should give you actually um, 81 b divided by 200. So I'm confident that you can do that. And now for the second moment, because remember I want to compute the standard deviation. The second moment, so square that, is equal to b over 10 to b of now x minus b over 10 squared 1 over b dx. This is equal to, again, I mean, all we've done is we've increased the power on uh, the sort of variable portion of the integrand. So increase this to 3 and divide by 3. So this is 1 over b x minus b over 10 cubed over 3. And here we're going again from b over 10 to b. Same, pretty much the same exact thing. So just use your fundamental theorem of calculus, plug in this endpoint, and then minus plugging in this endpoint. Straightforward calc 1 business. Straightforward calc one business, right? So go ahead and do that. And uh, what you should get here is what? You should get nine cubed b squared divided by 3,000, which now is going to give me the variance, right? So now the variance of the payout of course is the second moment minus the first moment squared not too bad <clears throat> um, <clears throat> what you should get here is this is equal to 0 0.078975 b squared which means that the standard deviation of the payout is 0 0.28102 B, which means the ratio, what I'm after, is this. So the ratio is, and I mean, so you have this, and then you have this. Take these two guys, do the division, and you should get 0 0.9735, which is your answer. I think that's E. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Um, can be tricky. Again, I think it comes down to setting this up properly. Get used to constructing a new random variable and writing it down explicitly. Uh, I think it does help in terms of the logic and the computation you need to make. So tell me what you think. Hope this was helpful, and uh, thank you.